That was a sneak peek into the world today. But first, a focus on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Let's go over developments out of Ukraine this hour. Russia says it will give Ukrainian troops in the Azot chemical plant in Severodonetsk a chance to surrender on Wednesday if they lay down their arms from 8 a.m. local time. Ukraine says its forces are still holding out in Severodonetsk despite destruction on the last bridge between the encircled city and the Ukrainian held territory. And Russia is also talking about establishing a humanitarian corridor for those trapped at the plant and that civilians will be able to be transported to the separatist region of Luhansk. The UK's Foreign Secretary Liz Truss says the British government will do what it can to secure the release of two Britons sentenced to death by a Russian proxy court in Ukraine. But police in Ukraine are helping to evacuate civilians from the town uh, given as Privilia in eastern Luhansk region while the area was under attack. A video released by the National Police of Ukraine on Monday showed police helping civilians, many of them elderly, who left a basement shelter as shells exploded nearby and packed into vehicles before being driven away. Pavilion lies just 20 kilometers to the north of Severodonetsk, which is the scene of a recent severe fighting between Russia and Ukrainian forces. A description accompanying the video on the National Police of Ukraine's Facebook page says officers managed to evacuate 32 civilians in three waves during one day. Uh, Ukraine says its forces are still holding out inside Severodonetsk, trying to evacuate civilians after Russia destroyed the last bridge uh, to the city in a potential turning point in one of the war's bloodiest battles. In the meantime, the Kremlin says it's sure that Russian-backed separatist leaders in the Donbass will be willing to listen to an appeal from Britain over the fate of two Britons sentenced to death for fighting for Ukraine. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told reporters in a conference call that London had not contacted Moscow about the issue. A court in the breakaway Donetsk People's Republic in eastern Ukraine last week sentenced Britons Aidan Aslin and Sean Pinner and Moroccan Ibrahim Saldun to death, saying they were guilty of mercenary activities. So their families and either the trio who were contracted by the Ukrainian armed forces were mercenaries. Britain has so far declined publicly to raise the issue with authorities in the DPR. The territory much of which remains under Ukrainian control is internationally recognized as part of Ukraine, except by Russia, which considers it an independent state. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz says the country will establish a national register for assets that are subject to sanctions or are of unclear origins as part of efforts to make sanctions against Russia more effective. He was speaking at a meeting of the Financial Action Task Force in Berlin. Mr. Scholz added that Russia's aggression against Ukraine has exposed an urgent need to make sanctions more effective. Praising the work of the Financial Action Task Force in fighting issues such as money laundering in connection with environmental crime or the financing of right-wing terrorism, Mr. Scholz urged them to intensify their work on global transparency standards. The European Commission has proposed anti-money laundering measures in June 2021, part of which would include the creation of a European anti-money laundering authority. Russia's aggression. Let's speak now to the VOA's Anna Chernikova, who is in Kiev. Anna, great to see you. As always, there's a lot of news flying around today. You have the planned evacuations from Azov, so Russia considering a humanitarian corridor, and then the bridges surrounding Severodonetsk being destroyed. Let's begin from there, the situation in Severodonetsk. What are we learning today about the Russian invasion, which seems to be concentrated in Ukraine's east? Uh, well, yes, the uh, situation in Severodonetsk remains extremely difficult. So basically, n no much changes from the past week. It's uh, just, you know, very inten intensive fighting and block by block, building by building. So uh, the fighting sometimes actually even reach uh, the point when um, there is a fighting for a certain building, not, not a block, you know. We know that Ukrainian forces still control the industrial area and uh, um, certain 
building blocks as well. But again, as I already said, situation is changing very quickly. And uh, um, we can only say that uh, industrial area is definitely under Ukrainian complete control. Um, we know also yesterday in the evening, it was finally confirmed that uh, all the bridges uh, were destroyed by, by Russian forces, all the bridges that uh, connect basically severed the net. Uh, so I would just remind you that there is this huge river that Russia, uh, Russian forces uh, are trying to overtake in different parts of Donetsk region and they do not succeed. So this is exactly the river that basically separates this area. Uh, we can say it this way. So now, of course, it's much more difficult. So without the bridges, it's much more difficult to uh, do any humanitarian aid, logistics, and any um, medical support to Ukraine for Ukrainian soldiers in particular. But uh, Ukrainian military uh, highlights that there are still ways to uh, go there. So supplies are still coming to Ukrainian soldiers and help as well. But uh, it now takes um, a bit more time than it used to. So we definitely know that river is all, is used as one of the route, but other routes are not uh, publicly, uh, you know, announced by the military. Uh, well, it, it, it keeps secret. But anyway, uh, this, the, the city of Severodonetsk is not blocked. So it, it is still connection with the city, but of course, it's much more complicated. Uh, in terms of uh, evacuation of civilians, of course, it's now impossible to do it uh, without, you know, a, a special corridor or whatever. So what we hear today that uh, Russia is uh, accusing, again, Ukrainian side that uh, they don't want to let people go uh, because, uh, um, well, they just suggest that people should go to the, to the uncontrolled territory of Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian side from at the same time is ag agreeing for evacuation, but they uh, want evacuation to happen to the Ukrainian controlled territory because of course uh, Ukraine cannot just, you know, uh, let Ukrainians go to, well, be captured basically because if they go to uncontrolled territory it's basically meaning that they are captured. So this is now well. This is now the point where uh, both sides cannot agree, of course. Uh, and it seems that Russian forces do not want to let people go to the Ukrainian control side. What they also suggest that Ukrainian forces should surrender. But again, uh, I would just re remind that uh, Ukrainians still control at least 20, 25 percent of Severodonetsk. Well, that's uh, uh, pretty different from, you know, what we're hearing, I think, on the Russian side, uh, the reports about what's going on uh, in Ukraine. Now, President Volodymyr Zelensky did uh, say before he will not be relinquishing any parts of Ukraine. Uh, he said that much when the Russian invasion started, of course. Uh, former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger had once suggested a negotiation of territory might help the Ukrainian situation as the war intensifies. Um, not heard any word from President Zelensky uh, regarding uh, the statement by Mr. Kissinger. Is he still insistent? I mean, President Zelensky, is he still insistent Ukraine will not be given up territory, even though uh, territories are being taken by force by the Ukrainian forces? Um, well, not only President Zelensky still insists, but Ukrainian society still insists because. Uh, here in Ukraine, everyone are sure that, you know, giving up territories would not help. So giving up territories is just another, you know, like cre creation of this delay that would then lead to another war. So uh, it's not going to help to stop the war forever because uh, for U Ukraine understand that uh, in order to prevent any other aggression, possible aggression from Russia in the future, this war should be, well, won. Uh, at least it should be, you know, finished the way uh, that Russia cannot, you know, just go on. And uh, if Ukraine agrees to give up territories and to, you know, froze this conflict once again, uh, it just gonna well th th this is the understanding here inside so uh, it's it just why I guess President Zelensky also insists on that because the understanding is that if Ukraine gives up territories then this would be just frozen uh, conflict for another five years and then Russia would attack again 
And uh, this is why for Ukraine it's very important not to, you know, give up, but fight back and uh, fight for every meter of its land. Uh, in terms of what you said, capturing um, while fighting, well, this is war. And of course, uh, there will be territories capturing and then liberated and uh, capturing again and liberated. So uh, this is another story. But giving up territories just to say, okay, let's just stop it and uh, forget and, uh, you know, continue to li living uh, peacefully, unfortunately, this is not going to help. And um, this is not only Ukrainian position, but also a lot of European partners also support this and, and you know, especially East European countries, because East European countries have more, uh, you know, um, well, understanding of this geopolitical uh, aspect, uh, you know, in long perspective, because they're also quite close to Russia. So I think this is the main point. And when uh, some uh, people and some experts are saying that, OK, Ukraine should give up territory. Uh, I think that um, this is just, you know, a, a short term. Uh, I mean, a short, a short term um, answer to this situation. And Ukraine definitely wants uh, to have and to get at the end a long term uh, and final decision. And everyone's looking for a final decision. Um, the situation in the Azot plant, as it yesterday, we understand uh, there were some evacuations taking place under heavy gunfire. Um, what do we know today? Uh, well, we know that for the, for the moment, evacuation of the civilians is very complicated. So I cannot say that evacuation is, is, is happening because it's just, you know, fighting going on. So... Uh, and this is why this question about corridor appeared. Mm, but again, for the moment, it doesn't seem that uh, tomorrow, when as Russia announced that they would create this corridor from eight to eight, uh, for the moment, we don't have any confirmation from Ukrainian side. And Ukrainian side already said that uh, they want would insist and they want this evacuation to happen to lift the chance to the Ukrainian controlled territory. Uh, so unfortunately, for the moment, we know that at the Zot plant, there are uh, around 560 people, uh, civilians, and at least 40 children. Uh, and they are stuck there for the moment. So uh, there is no information that anyone had a chance to escape just because it's too dangerous to escape for the moment. Let's talk about the two uh, British soldiers who were sentenced in the Russian uh, speaking court in Ukraine. The UK government says it's doing all it can and it's, it's exploring all avenues. But might have to go through Ukraine uh, to have those soldiers released. Is the Ukrainian government helping with the um, negotiations uh, for these uh, Britons uh, to be released or perhaps serve their sentences somewhere else? Uh, we also have uh, official, um, you know, announcement from the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs that they are doing everything possible. So I guess that they are a part of this negotiation as well. Um, we also have to remember that according to Ukrainian law, uh, all international um, soldiers who fight for Ukraine, and this is a special battalion for Ukrainian soldier uh, for foreigner uh, foreign soldiers as well here in ukraine so all the soldiers are considered as ukrainian soldiers so basically the same treatment and the same um level of protection uh are also for them uh, you know um they, they're also following the same you know procedures from the ukraine in terms of ukrainian you know uh, position so uh, you so this means that definitely ukrainian uh, government would protect them as much as ukrainian soldiers and this gives um a certain you know um hint that probably these soldiers would also be a part of you know maybe exchange or anything like that so they would be just on the list uh, with the same rights and with the same opportunities as Ukrainian soldiers have. Uh, we know that Ukrainian in, um, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, is involved. Uh, there is no particular detail on, um, you know, any negotiations or any even preliminary results or anything like that, because for the moment it seems like a very uh, behind-the-door conversation. So 
we just uh, have certain hints that these soldiers would be treated as Ukrainian soldiers in terms of the law. So I guess that this gives them uh, the same right as uh, Ukrainian soldiers who are captured by Russia and Russian-backed uh, terrorists just, you know, uh, to get a chance to be exchanged and return to Ukraine or and to their home countries. So we'll just hope that Ukrainian government will, uh, you know, um, maybe, well, we'll do everything possible for this to happen because, of course, this decision and uh, by so-called uh, court uh, is just a crimin another criminal action and another, you know, criminal well, war crime as it is. Uh, we've been speaking to you for a long time, I mean, since this invasion started. I know we've talked about, you know, the military uh, aid that Ukraine has been getting, but we're about to talk about food crisis I mean, in the, uh, after the break, but um, you, more than 30%, uh, I think, of Ukrainian land is, is already, Ukrainian grains have been affected, you know, by this uh, Russian invasion, uh, crops cannot be harvested and so on. So how is the Ukrainian uh, economy and how are people surviving um, food-wise? Um, for the moment, we know that, um, I think that there is a decrease of 30% or so from normal. Uh, Ukrainians, you know, Ukrainians have a very interesting mentality and very special mentality, if we look at it. Um, and uh, I should say that um, Ukrainians still do everything possible to get uh, products ready and uh, uh, all the procedures are following. And we see, unfortunately, we see a lot of uh, images that, you know, this farming uh, vehicles and farming techniques are uh, either, you know, got under the shelling or got on the mines and uh, exploded. So there are these tragic situations as well, but this just proves and shows that Ukrainians continue to, you know, do this routine thing uh, in terms of food production uh, despite war. Uh, of course, there are much less, but uh, what we hear for the moment that it should be enough for Ukrainians for the internal use at least, uh, in terms of export, uh, well, it would be a problem. Well, I mean, not a problem, but it would be more problematic and it would be less for experts, this is for sure. But um, again, uh, Ukrainian farmers are doing everything possible, especially at the territories which are not captured, because if we talk about, for example, Kherson region, and this is a huge territory, farming territory, and a lot, a lot of you know products were coming from Kherson, and from from very young age, uh, I remember that all the you know early uh, products, the earlier products, uh, the earliest products were coming from Kherson because it's a warm um, area. So uh, these territories, unfortunately, are lost, and we know that uh, Russian forces just take away this food and just sell it in Russia or whenever they sell it, uh, like as the same as with grains, they just, uh, you know, take it. So basically, um, I mean, just a criminal, a criminal act again, another criminal act, they just take and sell whenever. So um, I think that Ukraine will, for this year at least, will have enough. Uh, in terms of experts, well, much less, but still for the moment, there are no talks that uh, Ukraine would not export at all. So doing everything possible, but again, unfortunately, this uh, sometimes leads to catastrophic uh, situations because of the mines, because also Russian forces are just mine uh, farmer fields. Anna, thank you so much. Uh, really brave of you to continue to speak with us despite the situation in Ukraine. Where the rest of the world concerned about a food crisis, um, not much less uh, talking about the crisis in Ukraine as it affects uh, food production. Thanks again for speaking with us. Thank you.